Hey, you, where you going? Get back here. You're about to miss a great teaching. Get ready. Here it comes. All right. No, Second Kings. Ooh, you way off. Second Kings chapter six. Second Kings chapter six. I'm going to start at verse eight. I don't know if um, if you guys remember, we did a message one evening talking about um, the fact that they've allowed so many people across the border. They've in fact invited so many people across the border. And in spite of what the talking heads tell you, that they're just coming, little old ladies coming from Mexico. They're basically coming from every country on the, on the planet. Mm -hmm. And if you see the videos, they do have videos of them. They show you they're not little old ladies. They're military age men coming. Mm -hmm. And they're coming from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we've caught hundreds of them that were on the terror watch list. Um, a lot of them got away, of course. And by the way, don't just think because you don't live on the border that it doesn't affect you. Because they're actually uh, busing them and flying them all over the country. And I, I'm not just talking about these border states taking them and taking them to the sanctuary states so that they can do the thing. I mean, no, our government is shipping them all over. And I read in one article that uh, Delta headquarters right here in Salt Lake is one of the main carriers that's taking them all over the place. Um, but a while back, I, we did a teaching on the fact that you know they're here, so we need to pray for deliverance. We need to pray against, pray before it happens. Pray to stop the plans of the enemy yes. and so forth. And uh, I, I checked uh, before we got on here, that little YouTube video did pretty well. <laughs> people people really like, like, like that one. Uh, and so uh, I guess they got the picture, you know, that we need to be praying um, mm -hmm. against this stuff. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm telling you that is because over the last couple of days, uh, we prayed in general and prayed you know, that God will keep the city, keep the nation. Um, but I, it was yesterday, I think, um, on Given 15, that um, Dutch Sheet said that a lot of the prophetic people have been seeing the same thing, mm -hmm. and we have a new assignment. Mm -hmm. That new assignment is to pray for the waterways. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so that's what I mean. A lot of times you just get a general idea, but then God will kind of give you more specifics on different things as you go along. And it's not just um, one person. There's quite a few people mm -hmm. that God has been speaking to, mm -hmm. saying that we need to pray for the waterways mm -hmm. and so forth. And I just smiled. I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. And, and that's part of the reason why we're going to look at 2 Kings tonight. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there's a, a sequel to this in 1 Corinthians, but we're going to start at 2 Kings mm -hmm. um, chapter 6 because we get, we got to keep praying. In all honesty, uh, literally speaking, there's so many that have come across, it's not like you can concentrate on one area. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then they've been invited here. Uh, and also, I want you to keep in mind the things that I've been telling for a long time. A person doesn't have to know they're being used by Satan to still be used by Satan. Come on now. Come on now. You don't have to sign up on the paper to say I'm a part of this to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, there are, I can show you from Scripture that a lot of the crazy things that people did had nothing to do in and of itself with them wanting to serve Satan. 
but it turns out they were being instruments of Satan. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, when Pharaoh looked out and saw all those Hebrews, mm -hmm. he was just thinking about the fact that they were overpowering us. Mm -hmm. There's too many of us. Mm -hmm. And when he gave out his instructions to kill the uh, male children, he was doing it for population control. Mm -hmm. But Satan was using him in order to stop the coming of the Messiah. Come on, yeah. yes. We talked about Mordecai. You know, Mordecai just got mad at, uh, excuse me, Haman got mad at Mordecai because he wouldn't bow down before him. Right. Right. But his anger went out where he wanted to kill all the Jews. Yes. That's right. That's right. He was being used again by Satan to try to stop the coming of the Messiah. Wow. And so there's nothing new under the sun. That's, that's the way it works. And so the, the people that are doing this stuff today have their own reasons for doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I could get really uh, nasty here and tell you, but it would hurt, it would hurt people's feelings, so I won't, I, won't, I won't do that. But, you know, uh, some people have caught on, you know, you're, you're bringing them to replace us. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, that's why they're doing it. Jeez. Satan is in, in an agreement with them because he wants to bring in the terrorists and all the other stuff. It's all meant to, to destroy uh, the country. So no matter what your reasoning behind it is, that's the, the final goal. But I want to show you what we have to do as the people of God. Because there's no way of doing this in natural ways no more. Uh, this is bigger than, than us. And so in 2 Kings uh, chapter 6... Let's look at, um, i tell you this, I should have brought another Bible, I, I'll use this. I was going to read the Amplified for you, but it's, it's too small. In, in 2 Kings chapter 6, we're going to go to verse 8. It says, then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such a place shall we camp, shall be my camp. Now verse 9 says, so he, he's making a plan about how he's going to come against Israel. Okay, he says this is where we're going to camp out at. This is where we're going to set up our stuff. In such and such a place, this is where we're going to be at. That's what verse uh, 8 is telling Now verse 9 says, and the man of God, being Elijah, it says, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. This is what we began to pray months ago when we was talking about the enemy's plans being seen. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to pray that that the enemy's plans will be seen and that somebody will stand up and, and give warning before it happens. Yeah. See, I like fireworks myself, but I like them from a distance. Okay? okay? I, I don't want them on me and in my house. I don't want the firework to be my house burning up. Mm -hmm. I don't want the firework to be my city on fire. I don't want the firework to be my school's on fire. I don't want the fireworks like that. I like to see fireworks up in the sky, off and away. I don't want to see them in that way. Mm -hmm. And so I don't need to wait till it happens. So we need to continue to pray against such things, okay? And, and pray that, that God will always have somebody in place who will hear the plans of the enemy, and then somebody who will listen when the warning goes out. You see, the thing that happens a lot is that we uh, we can sometimes get warning, but we don't heed the warning. Because we don't see it, we say this can't be. But sometimes God will show you things before they happen. And so we got to pray that, that people will see and then, then the people that see will speak what they see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? And then the people that they speak it to will hear what they're saying. Come on, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Come on, Lord. Yeah. So he says that uh, the man of God sent to the king and told him, look, they got a setup for you. Don't go there. Remember in, in, um, in the New Testament, they did the same thing for Apostle Paul. Yeah. 
and, and you know, they were warning about things and they would let them out through the window, you know, down. And so they would always warn. So you got to be listening that you can be warned. And, and this is for you, too, as you're in prayer. There's, God's going to give you checks in your spirit. That's the best way I can explain it. You're going to get this check that you shouldn't be there. You should get, you're going to check that you shouldn't go in. You shouldn't go there. You know, even though you may have been there before, all of a sudden, that's just like, I, I don't know, I don't think I should go there. You remember when, on um, September 11th, when they, they, the terrorists attacked us and, uh, and so forth, there were a lot of people who missed their flights that day. A lot of people, you know, who missed their flights that day. They are so grateful they missed that flight. You know, uh, uh, um, and, and, and there's people who, who, who uh, didn't go into work that day. Those people who woke up and their car didn't start that day. They would have been in the towers and so forth. So there's a lot of times when things happen, you go, oh, the devil did this. And no, it's not the devil. Not always the devil. You know, it's, it's God trying to protect you and, and keep you from being in a place where he knows something's about to happen. And so it says, beware that you don't go there. And we really have got to grab hold of this. That God will warn us a lot of times, but sometimes we just too cool to listen. We are just too cool, you know. You can't tell me what to do. So verse 10 says, And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. So he, he paid attention, checked it all out, and he, he was saved because he listened to the man of God. I am believing that we are going to find ourselves in a, a place uh, where, as the people of God, we're going to be able to speak to people in authority. And that if, if they listen to us, we're going to be delivering them out of a mess. Oh, I believe that, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly where it's going to be and how it's going to be. But, but God's going to uh, speak to us as the people of God and have us say things to people who may not even be saved. Oh, oh, you know, but they know us and, and they're going to go, well, if he said, you know, maybe I had to check into this. And we're going to save them from some mess. Oh, and, and it's going to, it's going to, um, be a blessing to them, but it's also going to run around to be a blessing to us. It's going to increase our confidence in God. It's also going to increase their respect for us as a man or a woman of God. They're going to learn that, hey, maybe there is something to this. Okay? So it says, and he, he said that he saved himself not once nor twice. So verse 11 says, therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled. That's the enemy. The enemy was troubled. We always, that's another thing. We want to pray that the enemy be troubled. Yes. Right? We spend so much time talking about the trouble that the enemy is causing us. It's about time that we as the church and as the body of Christ that we begin to cause trouble for the enemy. See, that's been our problem all along. We've always reacted to what the enemy is doing. We need to get on the offense and start decreeing trouble for the enemy. Yeah. You know, a pronouncing trouble for the, for, the, for the enemy. Father, we decree that today, that the plans of the enemy are going to be for. They're going to be turned on themselves. They're going to be boomerang. And the wickedness that they plan for the righteousness and for the good and for the patriotic and so forth, that the wickedness they plan against us, that's going to turn around on them. Instead of us losing, they're going to lose. And Father, I even pray and decree for those who are who they are trying to financially bankrupt with frivolous stuff. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord, that they get the right judges who will turn that stuff around and make them have to pay for it themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we got to learn to go on the offense and, and go against the enemy instead of always being talking about how bad he is oh. and how we got to respond oh. to him. We pray, Lord, that there, there's going to be trouble in the enemy's camp. Yes. Father, we even decree that today for the things that are happening right here in, in, in Utah, that all the, the, the stuff that's going to be going before uh, the elected leaders and so forth, we pray confusion in the enemy's camp in Jesus' name mm -hmm. and clarity with those who stand for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Know why you're there. Mm -hmm. So he says... 
Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? <laughs> in other words, there's got to be a traitor in the camp. Mm -hmm. And don't you think that's wrong? Because you will find that in America, there's a lot of traitors. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who claim to be this and claim to and they will stand in front of you and say all the right things. Mm -hmm. But all the while, they're working for the other side. So the king's asking the question, who's on, on, on the enemy side? Who's working for Israel? He thinks that there's somebody there who's doing it. And I'm telling you, that is true more times than you would believe. In fact, one of the things that I've been reading a long time ago, uh, in fact, I was talking to a guy uh, yesterday and we was talking about what we know and, and where it came from and naming and local fellowships and stuff. And I was saying, well, they came out of this, and they came out of that, and they came out of that. My, my, my point is this. Uh, history uh, shows you that even within the body of Christ, whenever there's a church split, there's always somebody in leadership mm -hmm. that leads the church split. Mm -hmm. There's always somebody on the inside who leads that. It's not new. Remember um, King David? His son Absalom mm -hmm. was sitting at the gate. Yep, yep. And when the people came in, they said he was winning them over to himself. Yep. Right? Yep. And so he said, there's somebody in my camp okay. who's not good. Mm -hmm. Who's telling them what our plans are? Mm -hmm. And we, Lord, Lord that's what we pray that people right today who know all the sh shenanigans that's been going on in America over the last umpteen years, mm -hmm that their hearts will change and that they will come out and spill the beans. Yes. Come out and yes. tell all the disgusting stuff that's been going on. Because America shall be saved. We're going to see the things that we've been praying for. I'm telling you. And we're going to see uh, uh, it's, it's speeding up. I, I remember what he said to uh, uh, Jeremiah in chapter 1. He says, I will hasten my word to perform. I hasten. We're going to see that happening in the 20s. Well, we're going to That's see it hasten right. and so forth. And so he said, therefore, uh, verse 9, the king, his heart was all trouble for the thing, and he called his servants and said, who is on their side? Mm -hmm. Verse 12 says, <clears throat> okay. He said, and one of his servants said, none, my lord. None of us are Judas. None of us are leaking your info. It ain't us, yes. but we know who it is. Uh -oh. He says, no, my Lord, he says, O oh, king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. <laughs> I love that. Mm. Every secret you got, everything you say in your inner closet, everything you say, you know, in your bedroom. He says that the, the, there's a prophet, his name Elijah. He's hearing everything you're saying. Now, listen, Elijah ain't hearing nothing. God's telling him. That's okay. right. Okay. Elijah ain't that good. Okay. <laughs> he don't even know where he's at. Okay. But in prayer, and see, now listen, see, here's the other thing. All right. Almost everything you hear people saying today, even from from half the pulpits, it's such garbage. Eli what's Elisha doing getting involved in 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 politics? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm? What's he doing? Don't you not supposed to do that? It's the king. It ain't none of his business. Okay? You keep reading your Bible. That's why I keep telling you to read from Genesis to Revelation. I'm so sick of the insanity. Because you'll find out what the Bible says versus what people tell you. Come on now. Right. If the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, what are we doing? Giving it to the devil. Come on. I love it. We have set our butt down and, and let them do whatever they want to do and try to get them to be smooth and get be liked by everybody instead of being what God called us to be in the first place. Oh, we are the salt and the light. What does salt do? Salt adds flavor. Okay? But yet, instead of us flavoring society, we'll let society flavor us. Yeah, 
As one of his servants said, none of my Lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Oh. Oh. I'm telling you, as we, as we pray and as we wait and be still and listen, God's going to tell us things. He's going to tell us things that aren't necessarily just for us. They're not just, just for us. You're going to have some friends who are going through some stuff. And they're going to be struggling and bouncing and rolling back and forth. And you're going to be right. It really ain't your business. But because they're your friend, because that's your sphere of influence, God's going to tell you what they can't see. Now, he may tell you to go tell them. He may just say, chill out. He may tell you and say, chill out. And then they're going to come to you and ask you. And start talking to you. Then when they're talking to you, you can say, well, look, this is what I would do. This is what I believe you should do. Yes. And here's why I tell you that. You know, and you can you can speak to them and maybe help them not make a mess. Yeah. Come on now. People will say things like, why, why? Because sometimes their mess becomes your mess. <laughs> okay? But even if it don't, you still want to keep your friend out of trouble. One of the things that's happening for me, um, I'll be 65 in April. Uh, and I sit there and I, and I think about life. I got friends that I've known for a long time. What happens to them does matter to me. It does. You know? Nobody wants to hear... Their, their buddy has been through uh, hell in a handbasket and, yeah. or, or that all their children committed suicide or, or, or they're on number six. and Nobody wants to hear that. You want the best for your friends. And so that's part of the reason God will say things like that so you can pray for your friends and yes. that you can speak into your friend's life yes. when you get the chance. Yes. You're not being nosy, but they're your friends. Exactly. Exactly. Nobody wants their friend to go through all kinds of crazy stuff. Yes. So if you can help them, that's good news. Yes. Amen? Yes. So it says, the words that thou speakest in our bedchamber, God will tell you things. Yes. Sometimes the things that he tells you are for you. Sometimes they're for somebody else. Yes. Sometimes he'll tell you things you don't know what to do with it right now. Yes. It's okay. <coughs> Wait. It takes one time to say it, one time to do it. Right? He'll, 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 he'll. Remember, uh, I love uh, what's her name, um, Mary. Mm -hmm. with, with Jesus, Jesus would say things, and the Bible just said she would ponder those things in her heart. She didn't know what to do with it. She didn't know what to do with it, but she kind of held it in the heart, you know, and thought about it. And then there's a moment when he will. And I tell you this too. It's like when you read the Bible. I'm telling you, there are moments when I read the Bible, I'm reading, I'm reading. Now, not telling when I'm studying, preparing for this, preparing, I'm just reading. Mm -hmm. When I get through, I don't think I read a thing. Mm -hmm. I, don't think, I don't think I got nothing. I, I, I read, it was good, but I, I don't think I got much of anything mm -hmm. until I need it. Mm -hmm. Come on now. He said it when I need it, that's when it comes back. Remember what you read here? Remember how to go back, look at it again, yeah. look at it. And it'll help me explain yep. what I got to deal with. Yep. Mm -hmm. huh. I mean, help people understand what we have, what we got to yeah. deal with. Yeah. Okay. At the moment I'm reading, oh. and, and here's the other thing. Every time you read the same thing, God will give you something different. Give you pull something else out. Yeah. Something else will come out. The same passage you, you don't read. I've said to people this. I've said, you know what I found? I just found, I, no, it was always there. Okay? But, but now it's like, where you at in life, he brings it up. That's right. That's right. You ever watched the movie five times and got something different out of it every time you read it? Okay, because it's, you know, it's what he wants you to see at that moment. Okay, so let me go on. So he says, you got a spy, but it ain't one of us. It's Elijah. But it's not simply Elijah, it's Elijah's God. Come on now. Come on now. Man, I almost want to talk a little bit about familiar spirits, spirits here. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. If I go there, we're going to get out. <laughs> we're stuck there. 
You know how the scripture says about the children? It says their angels do behold the face of God. Yes. Yeah. You know how we talk about how the scripture says that angels are ministering uh, spirits yes. for the heirs of salvation? Yes. Yes. And uh, Gabriel says when he came to uh, Zechariah, he said that, that uh, Zechariah said, How can this thing be? He says that I'm Gabriel who sits in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So the question is, we are like, we don't know the plans that he has for us, but what if they do? Because they're in his presence, and they're assigned to us. So in order to get us where we need to go with, they need to know what the plan is. Right? They need to know what the plan is. And so um, people will say things like when you, when you use words like familiar spirits, uh, like when those guys do those seances and stuff, mm -hmm. and then Aunt Susie shows up, and Aunt Susie and all that, that's, that's not Aunt Susie, okay? <laughs> that's the spirit. And you say, well, how do they know so much? Because they've been hanging around. Mm -hmm. There are spirits assigned to your family. Mm -hmm. no, 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 maybe I should rephrase that. <laughs> They're angel assigned. Those, those spirits are there because you invited them there. Yeah. Okay. They're assigned. That's why in certain families you see a whole bunch of people do suicide. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Right? Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Why? Because that's the stronghold that's over there. Ooh. Over there. Yeah. Okay? Ooh. And so when he says that the things you say <coughs> in in quiet, there really could be angels paying attention. Mm -hmm. But I keep on going. Yeah. Okay. 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 Verse 13. Says so and he said, "Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him." So I'm gonna have a party with him. <laughs> Remember, everybody looking for you ain't looking for a good reason. Come on now. Remember, they told a wise man to go find Jesus, that I may come worship him. Yeah. No, they want to kill him. Okay, understand that. It says, and it was told uh, him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. I should have looked up Dothan, see what I meant. Verse 14 it says, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. The enemy always like to come by night in the dark. And they compassed the city about. Verse 15 it says, And when the servant of the man of God, was risen early. See, most of y'all wouldn't have saw this because he risen early. He, he rose early. He rose early. It says, and gone forth, it says, Behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And a servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So a servant got up early in the morning, went outside, you know, Probably had some cough in his hand. You know, no, he had cough. He got up in the morning, went outside. You know, hey, uh, uh oh. <laughs> he looked around and they were surrounded. You know. And listen, this is how life can be sometimes. It doesn't always come with just a little build up. Life can be going just fine. All of a sudden, you find yourself in the middle of the biggest mess you've ever seen. And sometimes you don't even know how you got there. Come on, right? You don't even know what's happening. Okay? It, it don't... It, when, I, when I tell you stuff like uh, like traveling, <coughs> we have an ocean uh, on the west that's a whole lot closer than the ocean on the east. But I don't want to go to the west because they're crazy. <laughs> I'd have to go through crazy cities with crazy governments and crazy policies and crazy police departments yeah. where right is wrong and wrong is right. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Right. So I fly all the way to the other side. Okay? Why, why is that so nervous? Because I can drive up to a, a, a stoplight in them crazy places and yeah. find myself surrounded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say the police say hell. No, they won't. Uh, in fact, if I fight back, they'll arrest me. Okay. Uh, it is crazy, you know. So a lot of times, you know, you don't have to do something or go somewhere; it, it'll just find you. Yeah, yeah. I've said this before. 
but not the one we got now, but somebody donated us an, an old uh, copy machine. I forgot to ask if it was color, but it was black and white. It was an old one. Mm -hmm. Brother West and I went and picked it up. Um, took my trailer, went down to Salt Lake City, picked it up. Came on back. The very next day is when that Antifa and all them fools did all that crazy stuff down in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. right where we were at. Mm -hmm. what? Okay, if they had done it a day before, we've been right in the middle of it. Oh, no. Now see, that's weird for Utah, cause we don't have that kind of crazy stuff. Okay. But it's normal in them other places. Mm -hmm. I told Brother West, we would've found out what my four wheel drive would do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going baby, y'all play all the food y'all wanna play. But see, that's what I mean. The, the enemy, that's why things are warped. It's illegal to do what they do all the time, but nobody gets in trouble. No, no, no. Nobody gets in trouble. No. Walk across a, uh, uh, go where there's a, uh, a crosswalk and walk outside the crosswalk, they'll give you a ticket for jaywalking. Okay? But they can block the whole city and lanes and, and the police will sit there and look at them. Okay? It, it's crazy. So, anyway, uh, he, 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 life was going good for them. He just walked in the morning, went out on the front porch, and they surrounded. Okay. <laughs> he, he, asked, he asked a good question. He said, hey, uh, hey, boss. And I know what he said. He says, how shall we do? <laughs> Not what shall we do. <laughs> how shall we do in this situation? And that's what happens. When you get surrounded by the enemy and all hell's breaking forth, that's what you're asking. You're wondering how this is going to turn out. How is this going to end? Am I going to die right here? Is this the end of my life? Or, or is God going to come to my rescue and deliver me from this mess? Because a lot of times it's a mess that you can't deliver yourself from. You cannot deliver yourself from. Let me go. Verse 16. It says, and he answered, fear not. That's the kind of leadership you need right there. Okay. He said, fear not. Listen, he says, for they that be with us, they that be with us, isn't that comforting? Isn't it comforting to know somebody's with you? Come on now. Oh, man. Even if, even if both of y'all don't know what you're going to do, at least you're not alone, right? But in this case, the one who's with them knows what he's going to do. Okay. He says, and he answers, if you're not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Mm -hmm. This is what we must understand in this time frame. Yes, yes, yes. They who are with us are more than they who are with them. Come on now, God. It looks in our own natural understanding on, that we are helpless, that we are hopeless. It's just too many of them. We don't know where they're at. We don't know what their plans are. There are too many uh, um, uh, targets that they can be going for. It's just hopeless for us. It is impossible for this to happen. Okay? But he, may, he points out a thing that there's more with us than against us. you got to believe that. And that's how you must center your prayers. Okay? Uh, so you can't even pray, Lord, let the police see. Because the police see them Antifa guys all the time. Don't do nothing. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I can show you the videos mm -hmm. where they're standing right there. Yeah, yeah. I can show you where they're beating up people and they're sitting right there watching. Watching. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lady in Canada. She went up, up on this corner across the street from a... Uh, Planned Parenthood. I don't know if that's what they call them in Canada, but it was one of those things. She stood there, she crossed her arms, bowed her head, and prayed in her heart. Never opened her mouth. They arrested her. <coughs> they arrested her. By the way, they're forerunners to us. Mm -hmm. They're shutting down churches, arresting pastors left and right mm -hmm. in Canada already. Mm -hmm. Already. 
coming to a church near you. <laughs> and so he, he tells them, yes, look, with your natural eyes, you can see the enemy all around yes. in everything. It's yes. crazy. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. But he says, um, for there are, uh, be more uh, with us than with them. Now look at verse 17. It says, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. In the natural, you see the enemy. You see how bad it looks. You see how it looks like there's more of them. And listen, it really ain't more of them. They just talk more. Yeah. <laughs> They're just louder than us because we too cool to say anything. Okay? They just talk a lot. In fact, I, I, I'm going to give you a little clue. Watch this. Whenever you're watching the the, uh, the talking heads mm -hmm. and they tell you about something happened, watch what happens. Whenever they're bragging about their people and how they're protesting this, watch the, the, the photo. The photo is always a close-up. And they want you to believe that it's a whole bunch of them. Ooh, gotcha. But when they have like a pro-life march, mm -hmm. first off, they ain't going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they do, they ain't going to show you no pictures. Mm -hmm. See, they want you to believe that it's 50-50. It's not 50-50. Come on now. We haven't lost the country. It isn't 50-50. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. My guess is it's probably closer to 70-30. Okay. Okay. But the 30 has a big mouth. Yeah. And the 70 is laying around chilling out. The 70's yeah. <laughs> the 70's sitting around laying back. But see, here's the other thing though. The 70, the 70 has got a job. Mm -hmm. So they really don't have time to be going out doing all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. The 30 who who support this stuff, they ain't got a job. They get paid to go out and do this mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. They get paid to go out pro. You know, plus and, and protest. Okay, but it's not more. If you watch them pictures, you can see it. I, I see it every time. They give a close up. It's not a whole bunch of them. They're just loud. And they have the support of the talking heads. No. When's the last time you seen pictures of a pro life mark? Millions go. But they won't show you. They don't want you to think that. But, but let them have a let them have a Planned Parenthood thing. A million people showed up and so forth, and you see a little picture. Oh. Yeah. Might be a hundred of them, you know. But they tell you a million showed up. So, but see, here's the thing: you can't see it in the, in the natural. His eyes had to be open to see. Listen, it was an angelic army. Angelic hosts yes. that were surrounding. Yes. There's an angel. There is no angel graveyard. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Woo. Gabriel was there with Mary. He's still alive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Michael was back there with Daniel. He's still alive. Okay. And, and he ain't. He doesn't have a cane. <laughs> He's, 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 he's still he's still there. Okay? And so what's happening is we've got to see with spiritual eyes and pray through spiritual eyes. Because when we pray that way, we can effectively turn back what the enemy's trying to do. Let me let me let me, let me keep reading for you. It says, there were ch chariots of fire around by Elijah. Now look at verse 18. Oh, I could, uh, time's flying. Look at verse 18. It says, when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Okay? What did he do? He spoke the word. 
and they were blind. We've got to start speaking the word over the, against the enemy. And the Bible talks about the angels wait and they hearken to the word of God. Yes, and they was waiting for us. <laughs> They're waiting for us to give them marching orders almost. Come on, Pastor. But listen, the marching orders got to be what God is saying, Say not what we're saying. Okay? Right. Somebody, somebody take what I just said. They, you know, we, we, no, we're not. We never will be in charge. Okay? God's in charge. Okay? We're his children. Jesus said, I always do what pleases the Father. I say what he says. So, so as, as children of God, we got to start saying what he says. And, and as we begin to proclaim the word of God, we literally uh, give the angel angelic forces the, 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 the go ahead. Okay? To do it. And so, the latest thing is about the waterways, but it's not just the waterways. We need to pray that um, for God to do what only he can do to protect our waterways. They, they said they want to um, disrupt the shipping lanes. They want to uh, uh, disrupt the water supply. Um, they just want to destroy everything. Listen, this ain't new, by the way. Okay. You, you know those uh, uh, them guys who want you to think highly of them, them environmental people? That's their goal too. Uh -huh. Think about it. Every solution from an environmental part requires us to give up our freedoms. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? You can't drive your truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't drive the kind of car you want to drive. Mm -hmm. Right? They want to eliminate us eating meat, dog. I can prove it to you. I can show you. I can show you the, their uh, presidential candidates talking about it. Okay? Everything that they in favor of takes away our rights. You know? By the way, electric cars, excuse me, electric vehicles have a place. They're called golf cars. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Call cars are great. That's about one of the only things they're good for. You know, you know, huh? Yeah, that's right. You know, so inside of a building, you know, hauling little stuff around, the club, yeah, they got a place. That's about it. Them things are worthless. I don't care what they tell you, they're worthless. In fact, if you want to buy one, you can get a cheap one right now. Go get a cheap one because nobody don't want them. Okay. Nobody wants. Got to flood them up for hours. Yeah. <laughs> you try. You try to travel from here to Las Vegas. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> take it. Take three days to get there. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're lying. No. This one kid on Utah. I think it was here. I didn't think it was here in Utah. He got one of them F 150s electric. He took a trailer and went to go pick up a car and come back. Oh, it was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. They're good in theory, not in practice. <laughs> so, but here's my, here's my point. We've got to see from a spiritual point of view and decree the word of the Lord. Um, not just there, but in everything. Um, two or three times this week already, I've been asked to come go down to the state capitol to speak about this, that, and the other thing. They're going to have a thing... Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about that DEI mess, the mm -hmm. diversity, equity, inclusion garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to have try to sell a bill to kind of put that stuff back. I never thought we'd be dealing with that here in Utah. Part of the reason I came to Utah was I didn't have to deal with all the stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. But basically what it is, is, is um, what's the word? Uh, discriminated against white people is what it is, mm -hmm. uh, to put it shortly. You know, I never thought we would have be having that conversation here. Mm -hmm. They they want me to come speak on on the, the pornographic books that they got in the library. Mm -hmm. People are actually thinking this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And of course, the thing is, they say we've been trying to get all these pastors to come do it, but they won't come. I bet they won't. <laughs> I bet they won't. Mm -hmm. You know, and then then they got another one coming up where they talking about uh, the bathroom That's bill with the transgenders mm -hmm. going in the bathroom. I never thought we would be debating this stuff here in Utah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But people are afraid. They have no courage to stand up and say the obvious. Yes. I mean the obvious. Yes. There's nothing yes. deep about this stuff. Yes. You know, but they're they're afraid to stand up and do it. And not only not only um, because the people in the church are leave, but because these people are, are real they're not much different than the, the, the Muslim wow. terrorists. Yeah. 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 You you stand up and say something. You stand up and say something against them, they will attack you. They will burn your church down and all that kind of stuff, and the cops will turn the other way. So I can understand why some people are afraid, but it's a shame. But we got to pray that that not only from outside, but the people on the inside will have the courage to stand up. You know, because, man, this is ridiculous. But everybody's afraid. So we want to pray for our waterways and... Uh, they give you the declaration thing. I didn't want to read all that. It's like mm -hmm. two and a half pages. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got to decree the word of the Lord mm -hmm. to protect our places, to protect our kids. And, and, and one way I say protect our kids, but you can even see the people who supposedly be protecting them won't protect them. Okay. Whether it be parents or whether it be school officials or anybody else, they're all afraid of being called a racist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tonight's message, I just want you to remember, there's more with us than there is with him. Amen. No matter how it looks, see it from a spiritual point of view, there's always going to be more with us than there's going to be with him. Mm -hmm. So stand up for the right. You will not never be alone. God has your back. Amen? Amen. 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 Any comments? I have, I have one. Yeah, get a microphone. Oh, you halfway. Understand that there's, you know, we stand with the Lord. Uh, and <coughs> there are moments and times when I want to say it this way. I, I understand what Peter said. When uh, Jesus said about drinking his uh, blood and eating his flesh, and says all those people left, mm -hmm. and he turned to his disciples and says, are you going to leave too? Mm -hmm. And then, then Peter says, where are we going? Okay. Where am I going? You have the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. I have to tell myself that sometimes. In this way, though, I have to tell myself, the, the, the only thing I have to hold on to is the Word of God. Amen. He's the only one that I can hold on to. That, that I, I have to stay here because I bet my life on this, mm -hmm. and, and I have to trust Him. Yeah. This is where we're at. You have to trust. Father, I pray tonight that as your people, that we would have our heart in line with you. Mm -hmm. And that everything else, Lord, just won't mean much of anything. Yeah, there's, there's pain, and, and it's, it's scary sometimes walking alone. But we're never alone because you said you would never leave us up to say it. And we can walk with confidence because we know that you know what you're doing and that everything that you do will always work out the best way. And Father, not only that, we have this blessed assurance in knowing that we're doing what you told us to do. So regardless of how it goes, we know that we have been faithful to you. And Father, I pray that as your people, that we would have that mindset that honoring you is more important than anything else. And that following you, Lord, is the way to go. You order our footsteps. And that's what we want to do. And so, Father, uh, we want to heed the call of, of, of the prophets of today who uh, you have spoken to and given them specifics into the general thing that we we knew ourselves we knew that this was bad this was dangerous it was it, we, we didn't know exactly where they were going but we knew that they were here and they were up to no good so lord we thank you that you 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 caused the body of christ to function together you give a little bit here a little bit there but it all paints the whole picture and so we thank you for that lord we pray lord for the state of utah that's where we live. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, that any plan that they have here would be thwarted, Lord. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, that you would give wisdom, that you would give a whole bunch of nosy neighbors mm -hmm. who are always watching and people who are listening and seeing that if, if anything don't look right, uh, that they will report it to the proper people and that the proper people will pay attention yes. and, and go do something about it. They ain't in too big of a hurry. They ain't on their way home. They're not going to forget about it. Yes. They will go investigate it. Lord, I pray for it.
confusion in the enemy's camp. I pray for clums, clumsiness oh, in the enemy's camp. That everything oh. they do, they'll be so clumsy that they'll be falling over themselves. Oh. They'll be leaving clues all behind them. That they'll just be making a total fool of themselves. Oh, the Lord, that you would have great wisdom and insight from the people who need to know. Oh, that all the cameras will be watching and uh, recordings will be watching that everything will catch everything and people will pay attention. Mm -hmm. And Father, mm -hmm. um, there are waterways that just all over. Um, I think they specifically say it about the Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, Antifa headquarters uh, where all kinds of silliness is being orchestrated by the government itself. Oh. So Lord, we, we definitely need angelic hosts and, and um, the people who do have common sense to be listening. Mm -hmm. um, we speak that um, every territorial spirit uh, would be uh, held in check, that you would dispatch uh, uh, Michael and uh, Gable and people like that to, to hold, as you did in, in Daniel's day, as they mm -hmm. fought against the Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. that they would fight against the strongholds mm -hmm. over the Northwest uh, uh, region and throughout our land, yes, and that everybody would take their rightful place. Yes, we are not ashamed mm -hmm. of the gospel, and we're not going to stand by mm -hmm. and let you take our land. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. He is going to get America and do with America what he established America to do. Yes. Father, as we leave this place tonight, please go before us. Um, Protect us on the way home and give us a great sleep tonight. Oh. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.